Hi, I'm Andrew. I work with DCR in Public Relations and Marketing, and I'm here today to talk to you about tarp camping. Um, the benefits, why I love it so much, allows you a little bit more flexibility. We'll get into that later on. Um, so before we start, you'll need a few different things. We're gonna need a tarp. You can get a, a rectangular tarp from Walmart, very affordable. Uh, you'll need some cordage of your choosing, be it jute, paracord, what I have here, or other nylon cordage that you can get from REI or the like. And then you're gonna need some stakes, some tent stakes. Um, you can use sticks, uh, or you can use metal uh, tent stakes like you would find uh, with a normal tent. But before we get into all this, we're gonna need to learn a few knots. So let's cover uh, a few knots right now. All right, basics of knots. Before we get real deep into this, there are a few things you're gonna need to know. These knots are all easily learnable, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, and I'll do my best to demonstrate with both. Um, but the parts of the rope that we're gonna have. So the standing end would be the end away from whatever you have under load and on tension. So in this case, my standing end is gonna be in my left hand. I'm right-handed, uh, so my working end is gonna be in my right hand, the standing end is gonna be in the left. Now if you get a little closer here, we're gonna go over what's called a overhand slip hitch on a draw. It sounds complicated, it's really not that complicated. Basically, you're gonna go around your object. In this case, we're gonna use a tree that we're gonna to anchor to. And you're gonna take your, uh, your standing end in your left hand. You're gonna come across your working end in your right. In this case, I'm gonna go underneath. I'm gonna leave myself a loop. And then standard overhand knot, I'm gonna pull that end through. Now, instead of pulling that end through, because you can see here what we've kind of made is a slip knot, which is the overhand slip. Instead of pulling the end through, I'm gonna pull what's called a bite through. So instead of pulling the end, I'm gonna take a piece from the middle, I'm gonna come over the top, and I'm gonna come through. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a draw. And what a draw does, it's this knot's still gonna slide, but when I wanna untie this knot that's now under tension, all I have to do is pull this and it becomes very easy to undo. I'm gonna do that one more time, okay? Come around your object, take your standing end over your working end, you go ahead and pinch, come underneath, leave yourself a loop, and then you're gonna take what's called a bite or a piece from the middle and pull that through. I like this knot a lot because it's easy to tie, it's easy to untie, and it's also relatively secure and relatively strong. So this is the first knot we're gonna learn, and this is the first knot we're gonna tie to pitch our tarps. Um, because it runs, and once this is set, now we have a top line that we can work off of. Next knot we're gonna learn is called a clove hitch. We're gonna go underneath this time. So make sure you go under, and the trick with the clove hitch is that we're taking our standing end around our working end. So what happens is when this comes back around, you see how that's stuck there? So this is under tension, and because it's under tension, it's gonna stick, and now in order to finish this, we would wanna feed our rope back through there. So a neat clove hitch looks just like that. And so long as this is under tension, it's not gonna go anywhere. Let me show you another way to tie this real quick. In a lot of cases, I'll be using a clove hitch to tie to my trekking pole, which I'll actually have with me while I'm, I'm backpacking or tarp camping. And the easiest thing to do in this instance, since I don't have to tie around this, I can come up over the top, is again, I'm right-handed. I'm gonna create two strong hand loops. And what that means is I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna create a loop over the rope in my left. Again, I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna create a loop over the rope in my left. 
So I have two strong hand loops in this case. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna take my weak hand loop over my strong hand loop, just like that. It works just as well as if you're left-handed. So here I have my left hand over the rope in my right. I'm gonna do it again, take the left over the rope in my right. And then I take my weak hand and I place that over my strong hand. And the space here then forms a clove hitch. But that's a great way to anchor that rope up top. So I could then pin this to the ground with a tent stake and I could draw that line out to my tarp. The last knot we're gonna look at is called a trucker's hitch. And the trucker's hitch is great for creating uh, tension in your line and in your structure. In order to start, we're gonna go ahead and tie another slip hitch on a draw underneath, right? Okay, so now that I've got a base to start working off of, we're gonna go ahead and try and tie this rope between these two objects very, very tightly. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do for the trucker hitch, you're gonna take a bite. A bite is a piece of rope in the middle that comes off to the side, okay? So we've got a bite. We're gonna come underneath of our standing end. Here's my bite, come underneath, All right? We're gonna pass our, our working end over top of that loop that we just created, okay? And then we're gonna take our bite and we're gonna pass it through the loop, all right? Okay, and then that creates uh, a loop, a static loop that we can then come back to to create more tension. That's what that's going to look like. Let's go over that loop one more time. A lot of people will mess up. They'll forget to pass their working end over that loop, which will cause them some trouble later on. So let's see if I can do this cleanly. There it is. So here's my bite, come underneath. Don't forget to pass that working end over top or else you'll end up with a running knot. So it looks the same, but when you pull it under tension, it'll pop right out. Again, if you're left-handed, uh, it's more or less the same thing. You go ahead and take a bite. You're gonna come underneath. You're gonna pass your, your working end over top that loop, and then you're gonna come through it's a little bit more clumsy for me left-handed. I apologize, but it, it achieves the same ends. One more time to myself. Pass it over and then come through. And that'll give you a nice little loop that you can work off of. Okay, so now that we've created a static loop, I'm gonna go ahead and take my working end around and then I'm gonna come back and what's gonna happen now is I come through this loop and then I can pull this really, 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 really tight. You'd be amazed at how taut you can get this line. Um, and this is what we want. You can hear it almost. Uh, that's how taut you want your shelter to be. It's gonna protect you from the wind, from the rain. It's gonna make you feel nice and safe and secure. So to finish this, all you have to do in this case because I'm able to pinch both ends, I'm gonna do so. And I'm gonna tie that same knot that we went over the first time. And in this case, it's just leaving myself a loop, coming under, and then pulling through. Okay, everybody feels comfortable with those knots. Let's go set up some tarps. Hey, so we're here, we're about to set up a, an A-frame and we'll go over all that, but something came up. Uh, these. Uh, standard blue tarps, you know, you can pick up from like Lowe's or Walmart. They have these grommets. Um, they pop out real easily, very easily rather, uh, when put under a lot of tension. Uh, so I wanted to show you a trick. I think it's a good opportunity. We're going to use a clove hitch and a pebble. You can use a pine cone. You can use a bunch of dead leaves. You can use mud, anything that you can think of. But what we're going to do is I need to create a new tie out point for this tarp. So I'm going to take this rock. I'm going to stick it in here close to where that, you know, that center line is. I'm gonna wrap it up, and then I'm gonna tie a clove hitch around this. And again, I'm working like basically one-handed. Uh, strong hand loop, 
strong hand loop, weak hand over strong hand, and then place that over your item in this case, and then tighten that up. And what this is gonna do, that's gonna provide me a nice little, a tie out point, if you will, and in place that didn't exist before. And you can do this anywhere on the tarp. Um, it's really great for like the middle point, especially if your, par uh, your tarp doesn't have guy out, uh, tie out points or guy outs. Um, and again, it's just a standard clove hitch. And then to finish that off, we're gonna wrap it around. If it will work, I'm gonna wrap it around once, twice, and then just tie a standard, our favorite knot, overhand slip hitch on a draw. And there it is, and that'll hold. Okay, groovy. So this is a standard A-frame. In this case, we tied off of a clove hitch on this little, um, on this rock that we showed you earlier. That's coming up to our first knot, which was a overhand slip hitch on a draw right here. And this is pretty under pretty good tension, all things considered. Rebecca gave me 10 stakes halfway through that, so I didn't have to use regular sticks, which was awesome. Um, over here, again, I'm tying to the tarp with that first knot we learned, which is that standard overhand slip hitch on a draw. I pop this and I'm ready to go. It'll hold under reasonable tension. And I'm more of the same over here. These are all uh, the overhand slip hitch on draws. Um, here's something interesting I can show you up here. So I'm using my, um, my trekking pole as a center support for this. This again is on that same knot that we learned first. Um, but I could, and I will show you how to do that to a, a clove hitch real quick. And in that case, I would tie to the tarp. All right, get myself a clove hitch. Do you have a stake? No. Okay. So that's a little sloppy there, but that gives you an idea of how that clove hitch will work on a very smooth surface so long as both ends are under tension. That's an A-frame, and I can sleep under here pretty comfortably. And this is gonna give me plenty of protection from rain, from wind in this case. It was raining earlier today. But this is a classic go-to for all season, three season kind of uh, tarp camping. We'll show you some other ones. Hey, so this is called a diamond fly or, or a diamond pitch, if you will. Instead of an A-frame, which is gonna run down the center line and split it into two rectangles. The diamond fly runs down diagonally and splits the, the tarp into two triangles. This gives you a much higher um, entrance, if you will, uh, and a little bit more working space. So if you wanted to have a, a small fire, you could have a fire here. This is for most of the time I'm dispersed camping uh, on our established campgrounds with hardened gravel pads. Stuff like this is a little bit more difficult to, to arrange, uh, but if you're into dispersed camping at all, this is an easy one. You just pitch real high on a tree. See up here, I've kind of gone as high as I could. And then down the line, um, diagonally. This only needed two stakes. I put a stake in here, three stakes rather. I did put a stake way out there. And again, 
over here. This now, is pulling so you can see that there's some slack here. If you take a trekking pole or even a regular stick, um, I like to prop up this corner. And what that'll do is again, give me just a little bit more livable room on the inside. If, um, if that doesn't work out for you, and then you could guy this out. So I could take another guy line here and pitch to the ground and that'd be real nice and taut. This is good if you've got directional wind. So if I know I'm gonna have wind and rain from that, this side here, I'm gonna be nice and protected. I do have a good bit of room. Um, I can work now. My back's covered. I could cook, I could dry out my gear. I could fix something if I needed to. Um, again, I'm 6'1", so this is an eight by 10 tarp. There's plenty of room in here. This is uh, more of a, a lean-to. Um, normally I would have another pole here. Uh, I'm actually using it in this shelter over here. So I've just grabbed whatever I could find and we'll kind of prop this up to create a little bit more tension. Um, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll hold if I go way up there. Maybe it will. How about that? So if I were hiking along and it's kind of spitting rain right now and we wanted to stop for, to have lunch. Um, a lean-to is a great way to kind of just take a break underneath. Um, very airy. You could sleep under this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to anybody who was uncomfortable with open spaces. As you can see, you've got a lot of exposure in this, but it does provide good top-down cover. Um, if it were raining while I was cooking dinner, uh, this is a great shelter where two, three, four people even during non-social distancing times could get together and kind of crowd in here and huddle around a stove and some boiling water um, to eat a hot meal after a long day walk. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're just trying to create a porch or an awning of sorts where you can prop up the front of this. I'm out of pole. Um, between two trees would work really well. Uh, in this case, I'm pitching out in the open. So we're again coming back to that clove hitch knot. So uh, I will note something in the back here and watch your step as you come over these lines. Uh, you'll see in the, in the sped up video, I had to readjust all my knots. Um, these, the longer your guy lines are, the, typically the higher your tarp pitch is gonna be. So if I wanted to pitch the tarp directly to the ground, I could actually just take this stake, I'll see if I have the tension to do so, and just pitch it right to the ground. Um, so the longer your guy lines, the higher your tarp's gonna be in the back. Um, higher is better for ventilation, lower is obviously better for like heat retention and, and protection from the elements. We have one more to show you. The bushcrafter. So, in really, really bad weather, a lot of people were like, well, I don't wanna camp in a tarp. Um, and that's understandable, but in a single wall shelter like this, you can basically create a fully enclosed tent, a tarp tent, if you will. This uses, I have seven stakes in this. We have three along each side, and then one out in the front, which is actually holding up our lean-to. Um, but this is a really storm worthy shelter that you could ride out heavy winds, uh, snow has no issue with that. Um, and even colder temperatures too, because when you get in here, this tarp is low to the ground. It'll trap a lot of your body heat. And I've slept as comfortably, uh, you know, in unfortunately in freezing and below freezing temperatures in this. Um, so yeah, really versatile piece of equipment. I like last thing, um, this, Bushcrafter, if you will, that's the name of the, the pitch, is set up with a center support. This is a trekking pole, and it's not attached to anything. This is all just held by tension. I'm not certain if Rebecca can get that. Um, one of the issues, and I don't, can you feel how warm it is in here? Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty toasty. One of the things that this pitch kind of lacks is rear headroom. 
um, but there is a little bit of play here. So I'm gonna take my other trekking pole now that I have it available, and you can basically kind of wedge this in anywhere you need to and create instantly, you know, more livable space than, than you had before. Um, yeah, so just, you know, don't forget to kind of pitch to your needs, if you will. So I need more headroom in the back, find a stick, you know, find a solution. I think that's it for today. We've done quite a bit. Um, if you enjoyed this or if you have any questions, please comment. Thanks a lot for watching. We look forward to seeing you.